Welcome to part two of Banff Sport Medicine's Osteoarthritis Information Modules. Now that we have established a solid understanding around the question, what is OA? It is time to discuss management. Considering the millions of Canadians with OA and OA's status as the leading cause of pain and disease in the world, there's a good chance you or someone you love will be living with OA. Is there a cure? No. But can you manage it? Absolutely. Identifying your lifestyle priorities is pivotal to establishing your direction, an imperative first step. Where we go from here is up to you. What is important to you? How do you define quality of life? This is 100% you, not what may be expected, but what makes you tick. For example, living with little or no pain, remaining competitive as an athlete, being able to continue volunteering, remaining self-sufficient and independent, having the energy to spend a day with the family, going dancing, taking daily walks, having a calm mind, maintaining close friendships. So in throughout Module 2, we will be discussing the top three factors of successfully living with and managing OA. One, be active and stay active. Two, maintain a healthy body weight. And three, have a team. Within the discussion of how you and your team can approach your unique experience with OA, we will take time to explore the various pain management and surgical options available to you as well. The first step of self-management is to define your quality of life. This is simply addressing and identifying what is important to you in order to set a unique foundation for your management plan. Outline what you want out of your life going forward. We'll do this in two steps. You can take a moment now or work through this over the next few days. First, List the top 10 things, factors, people, experiences, and activities that are important to you. However you prioritize what's important to you dictates your direction, commitment, and action. Second, list any concerns you have about OA and its degenerative nature. Reflect on how they may impact your life personally, socially, and professionally, both today and in the future. The goal is to create a Fluid Individualized Action Plan, or IAP, for today and in preparation for your future. Often, it is not the pain, the wear and tear, the bone on bone, or even the loss of mobility that is the most devastating part of OA. It's the day-to-day -day challenges, which, yes, may be contributed to by the previously listed factors. However, people rarely miss being able to repeatedly flex their knee without pain, as much as they miss going for a walk with friends or spending a day skiing a mountain. A few lifestyle changes will inevitably need to be made, but a commitment to your priorities will set the foundation for a rewarding and enjoyable journey forward. The second step is to build a team. You aren't alone. Managing your OA is absolutely dependent upon your commitment to action, but that doesn't mean you need to navigate the path on your own. Seek out a combined team of A. Health professionals. People who will lend support, tools, and technical guidance on your individualized action plan, and B, personalized support. People, or even one person, who is living a similar experience with OA. Someone who understands what you're going through and who can share the good times, the rougher times, and offer genuine support. You can connect with people through sites such as the Canadian Orthopedic Federation and the Arthritis Society, who offer extended support services. This person can attend fitness classes with you or simply connect with you over the phone. The ultimate objective of your team is to find modifications, alternatives, and strategies that will keep you feeling and living like you, while keeping you motivated and consistent to your OA management plan. The third step is to keep the communication lines open. Your OA status is not stagnant, and this also follows suit for your pain, mobility, and movement confidence. Continue to discuss any ongoing changes or progressions with your team. Are you maintaining your lifestyle? Are you feeling increasingly limited? Your situation may change, the pain might get worse, your physical confidence may teeter. Monitoring your plan and incorporating any changes to ensure your plan is the best for you right now is critical for OA management. As your arthritic team, we understand that you are not moving or you are limiting your movement not because you don't want to maintain an active lifestyle, but because it hurts. The deterioration of the cartilage, the increased exposure of the bone tissue and its subsequent nerve endings, can heighten the sensitivity within the joint. However, the impact of chronic pain does not end at it hurts to move. Chronic pain can lead to muscle tension, fatigue, insomnia, mood changes like stress, fear and anxiety, and relationship issues. 
These chronic pain outcomes need to be acknowledged rather than ignored or dismissed to ensure effective treatment and positive lifestyle outcomes. It is not the bone on bone or the fraying cartilage that is the challenging symptom of OA. It's pain and how that pain gets in the way of you living your life. Just as everyone's OA management is personal, pain must also be treated on an individualized basis. Something that works for your neighbor or that calm man in the sweater vest on that commercial may not be the best pain management strategy for you. There are three applicable modes of pain management for patients with OA. A. Non-medical strategies for relief. Exercise and good nutrition are the two most influential strategies you can practice. Massage, acupuncture, walking aids, bracing, and footwear can all contribute to helping you by maintaining mobility, movement, and managing weight. Keep in mind, losing weight equals decreased pain and increased mobility. The second is manage stress. This is a good general principle for anyone because the implications of chronic stress to your health, your body, and your life aren't particularly great for anyone regardless of whether or not they have OA. That said, learning and adopting breathing techniques, dedicated stretching, yoga, or tai chi into your exercise regime, or even taking a bath and reading a book can all be parts of managing your OA. And the third category is medical. Anti-inflammatory creams, oral pills like Tylenol arthritis or NSAIDs, injections, and nutritional supplements may become a part of your management strategy. Finding the best way for managing your pain for your current OA status is one of the main goals of your professional team. Your pain may decrease as your muscles get stronger, or your pain may increase as your cartilage deteriorates. Your management strategy will require tweaking as your OA status shifts. As your team, we want to help you manage your pain to, yes, decrease your pain, but through the process of managing your pain, enable exercise, movement, decrease stress, and increase function. As a society, we tend to always look for, lack of a better word, magic when it comes to health. However, there is one thing that does correlate with a decrease in disease, enhancement of quality of life. It will moderate your pain, improve your mobility, as well as your general function. It will also be the single most influential thing you can do for your OA and your pain. So I guess that even though it isn't magic per se, its impact is still pretty impressive. Movement. Exercise, physical therapy, occupational therapy. These golden ticket qualities of movement and a consistent exercise program are significant to you and your OA because of increased muscle strength and endurance, increased range of motion, enhanced ability to perform everyday activities, enhanced feelings of confidence, improved balance and therefore a decreased risk of falls, healthy body weight, increased joint stability, and increased stability equals increased function and decreased pain, so that's a win-win. Whether it's a matter of taking a little time for yourself or being proactive about a situation that many feel they have little control over, or if it's simply the endorphins, a consistent exercise regime makes you feel pretty good. It's important to note the required consistency and actual performance of a program to reap these benefits. Three physio sessions will not help if you do not do the exercises at home. An unused gym membership will not help you build strength. If you have never maintained a consistent program before, that's okay. It's important to recognize any limitations or lack of experience you may have when addressing the need for regular and properly executed exercise. Maybe it's a lack of accountability, nervousness about trying something new, or even a perceived lack of fun factor. Identify what you need, whether it's a physio, a trainer, a fitness friend, a reward system, or some combination of these factors to establish a consistent and effective activity program. The data on optimal training frequency for people with OA is unclear, but what we do know is a training program is the single most effective treatment you can do to maintain your quality of life. Your exercise program will be dictated by your initial fitness level. What is your current training volume, intensity, and frequency? What is your familiarity with basic strength exercises? Which activities do you enjoy? Are you a competitive runner or an occasional walker? Moving forward, each program should include something for your strength, balance, endurance, general conditioning, and mobility, which will be more than a basic stretching routine. Individualizing your program is a combined effort between you and your team. It must be based on A, your current level of knowledge, B, your OA concerns and challenges, that is skiing regularly, picking up small objects, or confidently walking around town, and C, your goals. Love to snowboard or do you live for hiking trips? Love to lift weights or live for nights filled with dancing? Let's work to make this happen. 
something for your strength. Why? To alleviate some of the workload and stress in your arthritic joints by building up the muscle strength around the joint. We will discuss four generalized categories of people and the approach they will need to take for gaining or maintaining strength. 1. New to lifting. Attend a larger Learn to Lift program or seek out personal training with a knowledgeable coach or physiotherapist. Perform a bodyweight only program to learn the movements. Second, you're semi familiar with basic exercises, muscles, and technique. Participate in regular group classes, commit to an at home exercise schedule, or book an appointment with your gym to receive professional guidance and a program catered to your OA and training goals. Next is sports specific, so you love to enter your desired activity or sport here. Find a qualified coach, trainer, or physio who will help build a catered program for your desired activity. Keep in mind, even if you used to ski all day without a strength program, a program might be the ticket to keeping you out there now. And lastly, working around, but it hurts. It is important to understand the difference between good pain and bad pain. A certain amount of effort and slight discomfort will be necessary to earn strength gains. In general, if your pain feels sharp or shooting, stop and reassess. If your pain is more generalized, tired, or even dull, you might be clear to keep going. If your OA joints start to hurt, assess technique and determine when the pain occurs. Does your knee hurt each time you perform a bodyweight squat? Is it only after you've been training for 40 minutes? Or does your knee hurt only within certain ranges? After you train, monitor your status 24 to 48 hours after training and discuss with your team. Train for balance. Why? To maintain confidence and safety when performing activity, as well as reduce risk of falls or other injuries. Balance training is one of the more undertrained and underutilized exercise methods. It doesn't matter if you're a 78 year old man or a 14 year old girl, your body and function, performance, and confidence will benefit from a progressive balance program. Balance or proprioception training improves your strength and balance as well as your body to brain neural connections to help you feel and be safer when moving. It is not about the muscle or strength of your body as much as the body's no response, which means these are responses that need to be learned. Not sure where you stand on balance performance? For the beginner, stand on one leg. That's it. Your balance training has commenced. If you're nervous, stand next to a wall. Press down into your foot, pushing into both sides of the heel and ball of your foot. Engage your core muscles and pull your body tall. Need a challenge? Slowly shift your weight into the ball of your foot or shut your eyes, but I recommend not doing those at the same time. Do you hang out on one leg all the time and need a bigger push? Simple progressions from here. Add a little hop, add direction to the hop, add a time goal, add an unstable surface like a BOSU or a cushy mat. If you are highly experienced with a variety of resistance exercises, you can include single leg variations of lifts into your programs. Bulgarian split squats, single leg Romanian deadlifts, Single leg squat and tuck jumps are all things that will continue to challenge and enhance your balance. If you aren't already sold on balance training, remember, greater stability equals greater strength equals greater function. Win, win, win. Our next component of a training program is something for your endurance and general conditioning. Why? To relieve stiffness, facilitate movement fluidity, and promote general physical efficiency. This part of your program is where we can get really personal. You've probably heard a lot about the need for low impact activity or the value of sitting on a bike. These can be great options, but remember, you have a way, but that doesn't mean you have to hang up your skis, your running shoes, your hiking boots, or your skates. Low impact. Let's start with the concept of low impact activities. Low impact will, both in theory and in practice, be softer on your joints. Activities as varied as cycling, skating, cross country skiing, swimming, and all water based activity make this list. One of the biggest benefits of water training is that you move through a large range of motion which will help maintain and strengthen said range. Swimming laps, water running, aqua size classes, and even resistance training are all excellent water-based conditioning exercises. Performing activities in water, in addition to ones performed on land, can be beneficial for maintaining sports performance goals while modifying training volume and intensity and expanding the variety of your movement patterns. For example, exchanging one land run per week for one water run will significantly decrease your overall weekly joint stress. So what do you love to do? Are you addicted to the rush of aggressive downhill skiing? Maybe you can add in a new activity like snowshoeing or cross country to keep you frolicking in the snow without asking too much from your joints. You could also reduce the number of moguls because of their high impact, or shorten the duration of your ski days, 
or simply cut down on the number of days per year? Or is running marathons more your thing? The options for you, once again, is to cut down on the frequency or length of your runs. If your joint is painful or swollen after activity and remains so for a day or two after activity, you are likely doing too much. You could also get a complimentary cardio workout by exchanging your high impact activity like running for a lower impact option like biking or swimming. Or is it the competition that you love? Sign up for a bike race or participate in a team triathlon where you can swim and bike and someone else can do the run. And mobility training. Why? To gain or maintain range of motion throughout your body for optimal performance of both exercise and daily movements. Mobility training is an umbrella term that includes everything from myofascial release like foam rolling or rolling around on tennis balls, massage, static stretching, and dynamic warm-ups. Mobility training is highly individualized. A great exercise for one person might be contraindicated for another. Working with a physiotherapist or strength and conditioning coach to develop a personalized mobility routine is recommended. Keep in mind, the early stages of a mobility training program are by far the most difficult. The good news? Every time you perform your program, the exercises will become easier as you work through scar tissue, the tone of your muscles, and the joint's range of motion. Into nutrition. Nutrition is a heavily discussed tenant of healthy living. The misuse of science combined with marketing campaigns focused on selling product versus actual health outcomes and the resulting misperceptions of good and not so hot eating habits makes the decision making process considerably difficult to navigate. First, food is energy. What we eat provides our bodies with energy and the tools to perform daily activities. There are good general recommendations that apply to all people, but also a fair amount of individualization based on health status, personal goals, present weight, etc. We will discuss the basics in a moment, but moving forward, your healthy joint nutritional choices will be based on the following three objectives. Number one, control, maintain, or obtain a healthy weight. The more weight on your joints, the more work for your joints. Number two, nutritious and sustainable sources of energy. And number three, consistently healthy food choices most of the time. Certain foods may accentuate the inflammation and resulting pain in your arthritic joints, whereas other foods are showing anti-inflammatory effects. One, obtain a healthy body weight. The primary factor of managing joint pain is working towards or maintaining a healthy weight. However, it is important to highlight the success of simply not putting on additional weight during the initial stages of diagnosis. A temporary decrease in exercise intensity and or volume, as well as a potential decrease in mobility as you work through finding the appropriate pain management strategy for you, will result in a lower amount of daily energy expended. Whether your goals are weight maintenance, weight loss, muscle strength, or heart health, it will be imperative to focus on the quality of your foods. Yes, quantity is a factor as well. However, if you are eating the right foods that are high quality, which we'll elaborate on shortly, your quantity will fall in line. In general, people eat on average four pounds of food a day. You can eat four pounds of processed fast food or four pounds of vegetables, lean protein, and whole grains. Unsurprisingly, these two examples of four pounds will be significantly different in energy and caloric intake, not to mention a heap of other healthy and unhealthy side effects. Eating right is different for different people, so don't get too caught up with the technicalities. Some people are carbohydrate tolerant, others are intolerant. Some people have food sensitivities. Some have more energy when they consume more fats than carbs, and vice versa. Some people feel best eating five to six times a day, whereas others operate just fine on twice. If you have questions about nutrition, please talk to our team, and we will work to connect you with the appropriate nutrition specialists. When it comes to nutrition, it's easy to get lost due to the volume of information coming at you. So let's simplify. Here are 10 basic checkpoints for promoting health by what you consume. Keep in mind, incremental change translates to real change. So one, keeping hydrated. Water in your body is like oil in your car, keeps everything operating smoother. Approximately two liters a day and an extra 250 milliliters for every 15 minutes of activity. This water volume does include tea, coffee, vegetables, and other food. Second, eat enough protein. Factoring in your activity level, people's bodies require anywhere between 0.8 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of their body weight. For example, a 65 kilogram woman who is moderately active can set a goal of 97.5 grams of protein per day. This can come from a variety of sources depending on their nutritional preferences. Eat your vegetables and fruit. If your veggie intake is low, try to add one to two extra servings a day at a time until you reach the eight to 12 servings per day mark. Note one serving equals one cup of leafy greens and half a cup of most other vegetables. 
Vegetables and fruit are both highly nutritious, but it is important to recognize that they are not the same. Vegetables are generally lower in sugar, lower in calories, and higher in fiber and micronutrients. It is recommended to eat three to six servings of vegetables for every one serving of fruit. Number four, consume healthy fats. And number five, limit your alcohol intake. Alcohol is inflammatory and yes, empty calories as well. Recommendations are to not exceed two servings per day for men and one per day for women. Number six, reduce your sugar intake. Once again, sugar falls into the category of highly inflammatory foods. Sugar intake and its strikingly high levels in Western society is strongly correlated to a slew of other health issues. Becoming aware of your sugar intake and lowering it, even by a little bit at a time, is a good general recommendation for everyone. Dropping sugar intake to 40 grams per day, or the equivalent of a can of soda. Recommended sources for sugar include whole grains, dairy, fruit, and vegetables. Do you need to immediately drop to 40 grams per day? No. But take a few days and assess your status. How much are you consuming? Can you cut it in half over the course of the next few months? Number seven, consume more unprocessed than processed foods. Generally, stick to the outside of the grocery store. Number six also overlaps with number seven. The majority of the sugar, and salt for that matter, contained in the Western diet comes from processed food. As a generalization, every time you select an unprocessed food over a processed food, you will be decreasing your salt and sugar intake in addition to those other mysterious ingredients with five syllables that we can't pronounce, while increasing your micronutrient profile and likely fiber in most cases as well. You can pick your motivational slogan on the importance of making a plan for our final three points on our checklist. Fail to plan, plan to fail, or a goal without a plan is just a dream. But let's start to make a plan to pull these principles into reality. Number eight, be prepared and have a plan. Remember, we can't wing good nutrition just like we can't wing a marathon or wing a professional degree. Seek the guidance of a nutritionist or a registered dietitian if needed. You can do this by researching meals, select a few days worth of meals that meet your nutritional needs, or schedule a time during your week to complete food preparation. Here's a little tip. In general, people eat three different breakfasts, five lunches, and seven dinners. Use this as your creative fill in the blank for building a plan. If this seems a little overwhelming, don't be too hard on yourself. Contact a nutritionist or a coach to design a plan catered to your preferences, activity levels, goals, and needs. Be prepared and go grocery shopping number eight. If it's not in your house, you will not eat it. Likewise, if it is in your house, you probably will. So stock your house wisely. And number 10, be prepared and write it down. Maintaining a record of what, when, and why you were eating. Keeping a journal of any kind will help to assess and track your nutritional status and the suitability of your plan. Whether you're a pen and paper person or would prefer to use a map or take pictures of your meals throughout the day, anything goes. An honest record of what you were eating is the simplest way to identify if certain nutrients are lacking or to highlight any challenges that may require extra support. Recording food intake is the number one factor of success for any nutrition program. On to our second tenet of healthy joint nutrition, have enough energy. Eating well should translate to feeling good. If you are trying to lose weight, please seek the guidance of a professional so that you can maintain sufficient energy throughout your day, protect your body's healthy mass like muscles and bones, while working to decrease your overall body weight. If you are not consuming enough nutrients or energy, your body will suffer adverse effects which can be counterproductive for lots of reasons. Excessively low caloric intake makes your body, well, angry. The body may shift into survival mode, which means your body preserves your fat stores while metabolizing your more expendable tissues like muscles and, to a lesser degree, your bones, for energy and resources. This will not support our joint health quest. Additionally, if you have low energy, the motivation to work out or perform your physio exercises is often lower as well. Extreme lows in caloric intake are correlated with difficult or disruptive sleeping patterns, which affects everything from hormonal balance to concentration and performance at work. In contrast, if you're eating a thousand more calories than you need, your weight will go up. Do you need to count them precisely? No. Remember, within reason, the more good food you put in your body, the better your body will work. For joint health, maintaining or reaching a healthier body weight and having sustainable energy are two important pieces to keeping you moving and moving well. And our third tenet, consistency. Just as with earning the benefits of an active lifestyle, Consistency is a key player in nutrition success as well. Eating well Monday through Thursday will not override eating poorly Friday through Sunday. 
With eating, you don't need to be 100% all day every day. In general, committing to eating less of some foods and more of other foods will be a great place to start. Part 1, limit booze, sugar, and processed foods. And part two, consume vegetables and fruit, lean protein, whole grains, and good fats. These nutrition powerhouses will help provide your body with the vitamins and minerals, building blocks, and energy to promote optimal body functioning. For further discussion, please seek the guidance of a nutritionist. For some patients, surgery will be part of their treatment plan. The inclusion of surgery is most often limited to the more advanced stages of OA. The most common type of surgery is total or partial knee replacement. This surgery is usually performed for severe or end-state osteoarthritis. In these situations, significant symptoms persist despite proper use of the previously discussed non-surgical treatments. The second surgical option is arthroscopic. Its role in the treatment of OA is quite limited. Unfortunately, studies show that the majority of case outcomes are not much, if any, better than non-surgical treatments in the alleviation of OA symptoms. That said, there are situations where arthroscopic surgery is required, although it is uncommon. Lastly, a small percentage of patients with a specific pattern of OA could qualify for a joint realignment surgery. As with all surgery, living healthy prior to surgical treatment correlates with improved surgical outcomes. We've went through a lot of information. Remember, these modules are here for your review whenever you need them. But before we leave you, let's review. Which of the following four statements are true? 1. OA is a degenerative disease that is characterized by the deterioration of joint cartilage, which can, but not always, lead to pain, difficulties with mobility, and psychological stress. 2. OA is the leading cause of pain and disability worldwide. 3. OA does not discriminate and affects people of all ages, gender, and walks of life. And lastly, OA has, and will continue to have, a significant impact on our society. You're right, they're all true. I always like to end things affirmatively. Now, what are we going to do about OA? Be active and stay active. Whether it's walking your dog, participating in a workout program, or training for an event, adopting or maintaining an active lifestyle will be your number one strategy for managing OA. Second, maintain a healthy body weight. Decrease the workload of your arthritic joints by building muscle strength and decreasing overall body weight. This will in turn allow for more control of your OA, your pain, and your life. And third, have a team. If you are experiencing any apprehension about the hows or the whys of your plan, or you are concerned about any changes with your OA, whether it's a shift in pain, stress levels, or frustrations regarding your daily activities, please do not hesitate to refer to your team. Your network, which includes everyone from your doctor, physiotherapist, occupational therapist, trainer, nutritionist, family, and friends are there to provide the knowledge, confidence, and support you need to help you continue on with your life. You've made it to the end. Thanks for listening. We hope to have helped you develop a greater understanding of what's going on in your joints, and we look forward to working with you as you continue forward in your osteoarthritis journey.